Hi guys, welcome to my first travel vlog. This is my first time trying out a video like this. I've always wanted to do a breakdown of my adventures and show all the highlights so that people who plan on going themselves can get a good idea of what to do. This will be a two-part vlog of Japan with this video covering the first few days of all the things I did in the Kyoto area. I hope this video helps you plan your own trip to Japan, and if it does, or if you have any questions, I can answer them in the comments. I went to Japan during Christmas season for the first time and wanted to do all the bucket list things as well as get the iconic shots. The, some of the things I did was do a kimono photo shoot in the Gion district, uh, visit Arashiyama for the bamboo forest and monkey park, took a quick trip down to Nara to visit the Bowen Deer and went over to Osaka Trout Kobe Beef. And finally, we also went to check out the iconic Fushimi Inari Shrine. So yeah, sit back, relax and hope you enjoy the video. Day one, I wanted to cross off a photography bucket list shot of mine. The kimono photo shoot with a gorgeous model. I didn't have a large budget planned for this, but thankfully Vivi here was willing to be my model and work for ramen, so all I had to do was rent a kimono. There were several stores to choose from when I looked online and chose this popular chain called Okamoto Kimono that had an aesthetic storefront and close to the Gion district, where I wanted to shoot. We took the bus from a hotel, and when we arrived at the store, the staff were very friendly and helpful. The store has a wide variety of rental packages you can choose from, from fancy kimonos with extra accessories plus hair and makeup done, or to more affordable options like a simple kimono and obito package. We opted for a simple red and white kimono with a matching obito. Our rental package also came with a handbag and faux shawl add-on. After choosing the look, the staff helped Vivi change while I scouted around the area. After half an hour, Vivi looked gorgeous in the kimono and was ready for some shots. After it got too dark to shoot, we returned the kimono and passed by Osaka Shrine at night. The way the shrine was lit in the evening was gorgeous and with the stone floors wet from the rain provided a warm red and orange glow as we walked around. At the shrine itself, there are a few altars you can pray to, different deities or if you want some good luck in a particular area. For example, there's a shrine specifically to wish for more beauty and according to my bad Google translation, there was a turtle god I could pray for for good luck. We finished the night by stopping by a small local izakaya close to our hostel. Staff didn't speak English but were very accommodating. They are all young and provided an English menu for us. We tried to practice what little Japanese we knew and ordered chicken karage, yakitori, grilled fish and some sake they had on special. The meal overall was delicious and we enjoyed the local feel of the restaurant as we ended day one. Waking up early to a rainy day too, we had one mission in mind. 
visit the famous Arashiyama Bamboo Forest and Iwatama Monkey Park. Even with the cloudy and rainy weather, we decided for the opportunity to capture some moody photographs and avoid the usual crowds that flood these spots. After a quick train ride, it was a short walk from Arashiyama Station to the Bamboo Forest and we stopped at a nearby shrine on the way to enjoy the scenery. Even though it was still early, there was a few crowds already taking photos in the forest and by the time we were leaving, large groups of tour guides had just arrived. The forest itself was relatively small, but the peaceful atmosphere made her walk enjoyable and relaxing. To get the shots I wanted, we spent a couple hours looking for open areas and waiting for people to pass by. But luckily, despite it getting busy, we caught a few breaks between the crowds and were able to capture a few bucket list shots before it became too overcrowded, making part one of the morning a success. As we left the bamboo forest, we encountered a snack stand serving traditional Japanese snacks. I couldn't resist grabbing a dongo to go before we made our way to the monkey park. Despite my reaction on camera, it was pretty good. I was just really hungry at the time due to skipping breakfast. Upon arriving at the park, we paid a small entrance fee that goes towards maintaining the park and caring for the monkeys. The hike up took us about 20 minutes passing several signs with info about the park, such as rules and the history behind it. When you arrive at the top, you can see all the little guys really roping around. We are greeted by a curious monkey hiding behind the staff and several other monkeys playing with each other. The park itself sits on a hill overlooking Arashiyama and offered a small pond for them to bathe in and several trees for them to rest and play. Although we weren't allowed to pet or approach the monkeys, we were able to feed them peanuts and apples through a gate inside a hut. Bigger monkeys would outright ask for food or bully the smaller ones and it was almost a mission trying to get the baby monkeys their share. You can also collect a stamp in the hut to commemorate your visit. After feeding the monkeys, our stomachs remind us to feed ourselves. So we made our way down to the main Arashiyama Strip to find us some lunch. main strip of Arashiyama. If you stop and spend some time here, you'll see it's a bustling hub of activity, lined with kimono rental stores, local restaurants, souvenir shops, and snack vendors. We spent some time here exploring the area, admiring the shops, and managed to snag a seat at a popular Kyoto Soba restaurant, with a stunning view of the Oi River and Togetsuko Bridge. They make handmade buckwheat noodles that they serve all year round, the fresh sobo noodles in hot soup were a perfect way to warm ourselves up, and the cozy Japanese aesthetic of the restaurant added to the experience. Whether you visit Arashiyama during the summer or winter, this restaurant is a must visit for anyone looking to enjoy some delicious food and breathtaking views. I highly recommend spending a day in Arashiyama to enjoy what the local area has to offer during your visit to the iconic location. With that in mind and lunch in our stomachs, it was time to make our way to Osaka with a quick stop in Nara to see the bowing deer. We finished our morning in Arashiyama and fast forwarded to the afternoon and evening, where we headed to Nara and Osaka. From Kyoto Station, Nara was just 30 minutes away, and although Vivi had been to Japan before, she never seen the bowing deer, so I was really excited to see her reaction when we got there. 
As soon as we arrived, it was clear what the town was known for. The train station was filled with deer merchandise, from popular deer headbands and deer butt-shaped snacks to deer plushies. Everything was deer-themed. Before we arrived, I looked up online to find out where we were most likely to see the deer. And it turned out there was a park about 15 minutes away from the station where they were known to hang out. Fortunately, it wasn't hard to find them, as we had already our first encounter with a deer on the sidewalk who approached us. Unfortunately for it, we didn't have any treats, but we tried not to make eye contact like one of those people handing out flyers. When we arrived at the park, there was a few stalls that the city had set up where you could buy biscuits for about 100 to 200 yen to the deer. We just got a few packs of biscuits and approached the biggest group near us. The deer were initially polite, but as you can see, they already knew the game of getting more food. So they kept on bowing, and if you didn't feed them, they started headbutting you. Eventually, they figured out VV ran out biscuits and started forming gangs around me. Gangs is the correct word to describe these guys because the more aggressive ones would headbutt you from behind if you weren't paying attention, while the others would try to sneak into your pocket for food like some kind of deer pickpocket. After an hour, he sat be ran out of biscuit, and the deer left for the night. We roamed around a bit, took some pictures, and Vivi picked up a deer keychain as a souvenir before we left for Osaka to check out the nightlight, and to try out some delicious Kobe beef for the first time. As night fell, we entered Osaka, the center of nightlife in the Kansai region. It's a city that's not afraid to show off its personality. From the moment we stepped out of the train station, we were greeted by a barrage of sights, sounds, and smells in the best possible way. The streets are bustling with vendors, giant signs, and three patrons lining up for some of the best food you'll ever taste. The nightlife in Osaka is renowned worldwide, with bars, izakayas, and restaurants in every corner. You can wander the streets and try just about anything. When it comes to night photography, Osaka is a neon light paradise. The city is adorned with countless giant signs and billboards, providing that iconic glow that we all know and love. It's a perfect backdrop for capturing street portraits and fashion shots, as well as for exploring urban landscapes or the river bridges. Unfortunately, we had very limited time in Osaka, so we took in the lively atmosphere as we walked around the city before finding dinner. We made our way to a restaurant called Kobe Beef Steak Ken we found that evening that served Kobe beef and was foreigner friendly. The place was tucked away in a small building on like the second or fourth floor, part of an apartment building which is pretty common in Japan. When we arrived, we got there before the restaurant opened without a reservation. But I think all of our praying for luck at the shrines paid off because as soon as we got there, the owner was just opening up and greeted us outside. Then they actually gave us the only non-reserved seats for the night. I just want to say arigatou gozaimashita again to the master. Thank you so much for letting us dine at your place. Before dining, we had to choose what course of meal we had. I chose the mid-tier and Vivi chose the starter tier. The only difference was the amount of steak we got. Each course came with a steak appetizer, some salad, and ice cream. As we sat down, the owner greeted us, a very warm and welcoming man. He explained the certification of the beef, its lineage, and provided its name and even pose for pictures. I just want to say thank you again for the great experience and delicious meal. Okay. One beef, one rice, only one. Only one. 
Hi. Thank you so much. Listen. The beef itself was as soft as tender as you'd imagine it. It just melted in my mouth. And it was my first time having Kobe beef, so it was a great experience overall. The seasoning and sauce they provided went really well with each bite, and by the end of the meal, I just wish I had ordered more because it was so delicious. After the dinner, we said goodbye to the owner, and goodbye to all the money in my wallet. It was completely worth it, and a good way to end our evening in Osaka. We walked around the area a bit more, and hung out by the water before heading back to Kyoto for the night. Our time in Osaka was short, but a fun experience makes you want to come back again for a longer stay. Day 3 marked our final day in Kyoto, and we were determined to stick to our travel theme of beating the crowds by getting an early start. Our mission for the day was to visit and capture a photo of the world-renowned Fushimi Inari Shrine in the morning before making our way to our Ryokan in Mount Fuji. Fushimi Inari is known for its iconic red gates, also known as Tori, where people come to offer prayers to the economy of rice and agriculture. However, these days, most visitors are here to pray for general success in the business ventures, or, like me, to get those bucketless shots. We took the early train to Fushimi and Naritaisha, but unfortunately, many others had the same idea of arriving early. Despite the crowds, we were determined to make the best of our time and sought out quieter spots to capture stunning scenes of the shrine and its surroundings. Along the way, we explored the small shrines and prayer areas, where I even picked up a small fox charm. There are also paths off the main trail for other shrines, and you might even come across the cats that like to hang out there. As we climbed the gates, the crowds started to thin out, and the lighting became a lot more favorable which presented the perfect opportunity to capture shots I wanted to shoot for so long. Upon our descent, we came across some stalls where visitors can have their fortunes drawn to determine their luck. Like most of Japan, it's a gacha system, where you can draw from a box and a stick with your fortune comes out. If the fortune is favorable, visitors can purchase the charm to take home with them. If not, and your luck isn't so good, I think you can pay the temple to cleanse it, or just ignore it and hope it's not true. <laughs> Luckily, my fortune read really good luck according to my bad Google translation skills, so if anyone knows what it actually says, I'd like to know. Finally, we spent our remaining time checking out the various stalls and vendors before it was time to catch our train to Fuji, bringing our unforgettable time in Kyoto to an end. So that's it. That was our time in Kyoto. We did do a few things in between like checked out a cute coffee shop, went to a sushi train restaurant, checked out Kyoto Station, but Kyoto was our first stop in Japan and we tried to get as much of the highlights done as possible. If I had to do it again, I'd definitely spend more time in Arashiyama, like a whole day or afternoon so we didn't have to rush, spend some time in Gion, the older district of Kyoto, for more of the heritage and cultural scenes, and let Osaka be its own trip for a few days as I really enjoyed the nightlife and all the different vendors you can try out. Anyways, thank you for staying to the end. I'll be making the second half of our trip into another video covering Mount Fuji where we stayed in Ryokan and I woke up super early to get a sunrise shot of Mount Fuji itself. And 
of course, Tokyo, including Team Labs and Skytree. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe.